Hey guys, um, welcome to the next part of this maths topic, and that is basically geometric sequences. So, you guys might ask, what is a geometric sequence? Well, a geometric sequence, or progression, is formed when each term is multiplied by the same number to get the next term. We call this the common ratio. So let me just write out some stuff for you. So, we need to get familiar with the term. So, this is called a geometric sequence. However, it can also be called progression. So get familiar with the term GP. Okay, so now let's have a look. I'm going to put an example here of a GP, and I'm just going to explain it really briefly. So here's an example, so E.G. We've got this GP here, which is going which is getting times by 2 every single time. So 3, 6, 12, 24, and 48. So besides me telling you that it's getting times by 2, a GP is usually characterized by something called the common ratio. So in this example, you should notice that each term is doubled in the sequence. So the number that we're multiplying by each time is 2. So you can see that. So you can see that from here to here, you're multiplying by 2. Same with this. So from here to here, you're multiplying by 2. So that goes on from dot 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 for wherever time, for the entire sequence. So um, just clarifying, the notation used is very similar to before, except that we don't need to have a common difference, but rather a common ratio, or R. Now what I'm referring to is arithmetic progression. So it's just like arithmetic progressions, but instead of having a common difference, we have a common ratio, and we call that R. So I'm just going to write that out, or common ratio is what actually characterizes geometric sequences, and it's equal to R. So that is that is our key term that we need to know. So, okay, what if I said to you, generate a sequence with a equals negative 81 and r equals 1 over 3. So I'm just going to write this out for you. And as we should remember, a is our starting term from doing arithmetic progressions and our ratio equals 1 over 3. So I'm just going to simply, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my fa first term. So I know that my first term is negative 81. Now the next term, next term, next term, how am I going to find this out? Okay, good question. The ratio. Now as we defined before, common ratio is just basically what the first number, or whatever number it is, gets doubled or well, gets times by the common ratio. So uh, when each term is multiplied by the same number to get the next term, that is what the common ratio is. So just remember that, and now we can just apply this. So we can say, we're going to times this by 1 over 3, which is the same as dividing it by 3. So if I divide it by 3, I'd get something like negative 27. And then if I divided this by 3, I'd get something like negative 9. And adding on, I would keep on going and going, and I'd get something like negative 3. So timesing this by 1 over 3 would get you negative 3. So as you can see, that I've just basically, all I've done here is I've divided by 1 over, th uh, well, I've times by 1 over 3. So all I've had to do is, the, the t timesing by 1 over 3 is the same as dividing it th uh, by 3. So that's what I've done, basically. So as you can see here, that, that's, I've just times by 1 over 3. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly move on and explain a little bit more about what I know about this. Okay, so moving on, um, we, we all know that we need to know how to derive the common ratio. So I'm just going to quickly teach you that, and it's fairly simple. So as we did uh, before, let's just consider we had the geometric progression of, uh, suppose, 3, 6, 12, 24, and 48. So now, if I wanted to find R, right, if I wanted to find R, how would I do this? So that's not that hard. All you have to do is, like, in arithmetic progressions, you minus 
T2 with T1. But in geometric progressions, all you have to do is divide it. So it would just be something like this, T2 over T1. Okay, cool, let's try that. That equals to 6 over 3. And what's that? That's 2. And now we can test this. So 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24. No worries. But let's just have a little bit uh, of a more reliable result. So if we had T2 equals T1, it's obviously the same for T3 equals T3 over T2. So T3 over T2. And that's also the same as T4 over T3. So I'm just going to quickly test this. So 6 over 3 equals to 12 over 6 equals to 24 over 12. So we can obviously see that all of these equal to 2. So that's, you know, 2, 2, and 2. So no worries. We figured this out. We figured out that this is how we get our R. So R, so we can just conclude that the, the um, R equals 2 because of this. That's our reasoning, that's our proof. And we've just concluded that R equals 2. They didn't even have to tell us that it's, it's, it's getting increased by uh, a multiplication of 2. But we now know that R is 2. Okay. So now let's consider we wanted to find the nth term. So if a question asks you that this is a geometric progression, and I want you to find, suppose, the 18th term, how would we do this? And what's the formula? And how do you derive it? Okay, no worries. This is how you do it. So suppose we already know that T1 equals A. Well, if we know this, and we know that the ratio is the second term, something that the first term times the ratio is the second term, well, we know that T2 is equal to A times R, which is also equal to AR. Because we know that in a ratio, every single terms get, term gets times by the ratio. So, okay, no worries. We know this. Now, if we move on to the third term, we know that it is AR times R, because again, it has to be times by the ratio. And then that hence brings us to AR squared. Now, moving on, we have T4, term 4, which is AR squared times R, which is AR cubed. So, there's just something really, um, a, a small link that you can see here. We can see that if we times it by 2, we get AR. Times by 3, we get AR squared. Times by f uh, the term 4, we get AR cubed. Sorry, I meant the terms. So term 2, term 3, term 4. So we can see that this is getting minus by 1 to, to actually give us this. So in our formula, we can just say, well, pretty much, we can just say that the formula is, if you wanted to find t to the nth, it would equal to a r n minus 1. Do you see what I did here? I just manipulated my reasoning. I just showed you the reasoning behind this. So. I hope you understand this. So, all it is is that suppose I had a geometric progression, and once again I'm going to use a really simple one. So, I've got 2, 4, 8, then I've got 16, and I've got 32. So, you can tell that this one's getting times by 2 every single time. I hope you saw that. But, anyways, we know that it's getting times by 2. Now, in t to the nth, we know that. A is equal to the first term. R is equal to ratio. And N is equal to the number of the term we want to find. So let's sub it in. Suppose I wanted to find the tenth number. Okay, no worries. Let's have a look. If I wanted to find the tenth number, I'll just sub it straight in. So T to the ten equals a times r and 10 minus 1. Um, sorry for not simplifying it so early. My bad. I'm just going to simplify it again. So t10 t equals a, which is our first term, 2, times r, which is our ratio, which is 2. So 2 times 2. And that's all to the power of 9. So we can say that it's, we can basically say that this is 1024. That is our answer. Our answer is that our tenth term is going to be 1. Okay, so moving on to B, we can just uh, figure this out. So it says, what is the first term A? 
So geometric series has second term 5 and the ratio of 8th term to the 7th term is 3. So they've already given us that the second term is 5, so maybe we can manipulate that in order to find the first term. So let's try this. So B We've got T2 equals 5, right? So we can just say, using the uh, T to the nth formula, um, T2 equals A times 3, which is our ratio, and we would end up getting, um, so it would be 2 minus 1, because our n term is 2. And that's the formula. So, just so you guys can recall, this is the formula: T n equals a r n minus one, and that's what we've just done here. So, moving on, we can just see that. Um, okay, so five, which is the second term, which they've already given us in the question, equals a, which we do not know, times three, which is the common ratio, which we've already figured out, and then to the two minus one which we know because the second term is 5 and it's just using the normal formula n minus 1 so simplifying this further we get a times 3 because 2 minus 1 is 1 and 3 to the power 1 is obviously just 3 and we get 5 equals a times 3 now even further we can say 5 equals 3a and then we can say that a equals 5 over 3 I divided 3 on both sides. So we figured out that the first term is 5 over 3. Congratulations. OK, we can move on to the next step. OK, so now it's asking us to calculate the sum of the first 10 terms. So we can use a formula for this, and the formula is s um, to the nth equals a bracket 1 minus r to the power of n bracket over 1 minus r. So let's do this. We want to find 10. So s 10 s10 equals to a, which is our first term, which is 5 over 3, bracket 1 minus r. So 1 minus r, which is the ratio, times uh, to the power of 10. So 3 to the 10 over 1 minus r. So 1 minus 3. So now we can just solve this, and we would end up getting something like so that's the final answer you'll get. 4,900, oh no wait, 49,206 and two-thirds. So I hope this helped you, and I will see you next time. Thanks.